Welcome to the France 24 interview. I'm Kate Moody. My guest today is Claudie Aignoret, a former astronaut and doctor and the first French woman to travel to space. Thanks for being with us. Pleasure. Now, the world is marking the 50-year anniversary of that giant leap for mankind, uh, the first landing on the moon. Let's take just a moment to watch that minute in history. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Now, Cla Claudie, you were 12 years old when you first heard those words. Does that moment ever get old? That's still very emotional for me to see these elements. At 12 years, you have a brain that is full of imagination, of a dream. And on July 69, this dream was a reality and was really something uh, important. And I do like uh, seeing again this with the emotion, the fascination, because I, I think we need not just remember that time, but being conscious that uh, science, technology, is such a part of a human adventure, endeavor, and that we will follow on on this path of exploration. I'm preparing that for the future. In 2019, returning humans to the moon is once again a top priority for space agencies around the world. Why is that? I would say that this period of uh, Apollo mission with a geopolitical environment, uh, it was a kind of war in space, uh, makes that possible with uh, the push of the um, engineers and, uh, and scientists. We had after that a long period staying in a low Earth orbit in order to know very well the microgravity environment. And now, 50 years after, we have the moon in the center of the agenda of the different agencies, space agencies, but not just that, there is private actors that are now with a vision to go in space, speaking about Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos. So that means the landscape is different and on the geopolitical landscape, I would say also that there is some competition going again with the Chinese performing a lot of interesting uh, experiment and realization on the moon and the American declaration to be there in less than five years from now with a crew and I hope a female crew also. Now, you're currently involved in a project that hopes to build uh, what's being described as a moon village uh, near the South Pole there. What's the goal? I would explain that it's a, a concept and I think that's interesting for the period to come. So we say that there is this kind of competition to be there on the moon to do science and to do um, this uh, trip with crews from the Chinese, the American uh, partners. And after that, we would like to stay on the surface to learn how to live, how to work in order to prepare the future and in order to been an expansion of our uh, humanity on the, on the moon surface. And uh, in that phase of um, expansion, it would be interesting to think altogether the best way to do that. That means maybe with new alliance, with a kind of governance, in order to be responsible of what we will do in synergy with different interests, scientific, economic, technologic, Politic, why not? But trying to think as a humanity in this phase of expansion. And I think this will be important because we will find new solutions with new partnership, and this solution will be useful in our Earth stakes. And I think it must the least of one to try to think all together how to be really um, progressist humanity, I would say, and in the multilateral cooperation. And that's the idea of this village. Now, NASA has said openly that the next step after the moon would be going to Mars. Uh, what would we hope to gain from that? 
the Mars destination is really very interesting, fascinating for the scientific community because maybe there in this planet we will discover some traces of life and that will explain the evolution of our life on, on Earth. But that's really very difficult but because it's far away. There is a lot of uh, technological problem to be solved, physiological problem with the radiation, the autonomy of the equipage, the preparation of uh, everything. So that means we learn to have a we need to have a learning phase. And this is a continuum in between going forward to the moon in order to then um, take this new step for a faraway uh, destination. And this is a future for the generation that is already in charge of activities. And the young generation will participate in it. Now, you mentioned this goal of sending a female astronaut to the moon. Uh, you yourself broke a number of gender barriers there. Uh, you were the first European woman to work on the International Space Station and the first French woman uh, to go up into space. Why is gender equality in space so important? That's important because of space, that's the endeavor of our humanity. Our humanity is diverse with uh, male and female. And... Uh, uh, I would try to say that uh, part of this endeavor is to realize what you have inside. You know. And it's not so much a problem of uh, selection of uh, women on, or uh, in the process. There's a problem of application. That means the young women need to be confident in the fact that if there is really a desire, a wish to do something, they have to express that and to be part of the endeavor. And this diversity in all the fields will give new solution, new way of work together. And space is future, but that's also today. And this is a diversity of society. We need to express all the talents in order to be successful. With this renewed focus on the moon, what role do you see for the International Space Station? Is it still relevant? The International Space Station is for 20 years now in, a, in orbit. We learned a lot. And I would say that we really develop a wonderful instrument for cooperation. We have seen that. It's a wonderful uh, diplomatic tool, I would say, but also for science. And we have perfect laboratories in orbit now. Laboratories that are in the hands of the scientific community, but that can be also in the hands of private entities wanting to use this microgravity environment for pharma development, for energy development, for technology structure. So that means we can shift progressively from a pure public entity to a more applied research and even commercial one. So that means that all the investment that we did in the preparation and development of the, the station can be now proposed to the civil society and the economical entities. You alluded to the role that geopolitics can play in this sort of new 21st century space race. Do you see more international cooperation or competition in space? I think there is different uh, phases for the human space flight. See, now there is a phase of uh, competition. But as I said earlier, in order to be sustainable, we will need to be all together in cooperation for the moon and then for, for Mars. But space fields, that's a lot of different things. Speaking about science, uh, space sciences, with uh, the sun studies or Mercury studies, uh, this is completely international uh, science. When speaking about uh, satellites uh, that are looking for Earth observation, for telecommunication, and all these Earth stakes, that sure that you have a competition in access, competition in technology, and competition in the way you will use the data that you, that you will collect. So everything is everywhere. So competition and cooperation, but speaking really about this future of this human endeavor, this will be in cooperation in order to be sustainable and to be really progress for our humanity. Children around the world still dream of going to space. Yeah. 
What advice would you give them about how to get there? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really pleased that space has such a power as an inspiration for the, the young generation. Oh, what say, um, you have a dream, you have a desire, so be bold. Be bold, but be prepared. So that means you have to learn in order then to be bold and to be confident in the realization you can achieve. Words from a former astronaut herself on how to get there. Claudie Enyeri, thanks so much for joining us on France 24. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more news and analysis coming up. Five, four, three, two, one. Zero. Exactly half a century since Neil Armstrong first set foot on the moon, we bring you this special edition of Inside the Americas from the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral in Florida and ask where to from here for the US space program. Inside the Americas, presented by Tom Burgess Watson on France 24 and France24.com.